okay now today we can see about the topic of practical applications of bernoulli's equation so practical applications of bernoulli's equation so in the previous videos we see about the derivation of the bernoulli's equations and what are the real time applications uh, where we can see the application of the bernoulli's principle we will let's see about the practical applications so there are many devices uh, measuring devices which use the principle of the bernoulli's uh, principle uh, and thereby they function so what are those instruments we will see now the first one is venturi meter and second one is orifice meter and third one is rotameter and elbow meter and fourth one is pitot tube so all these four are the practical applications of the bernoulli's equation that means these four measuring devices they work on the principle of the bernoulli's they work on bernoulli's principle only so let us see one by one in today's class we will see about the description of the full description of the venturi meter so venturi meter while going to the description of the venturi meter first of all we have to know the for what purpose this venturi meter is used the main what is the main uh, important practical application of the venturi meter means the this instrument is mainly used to measure the rate of discharge in a pipeline rate of discharge is nothing but the rate of flow uh, the volume which uh, if if we take a pipe section and uh, if we want to find out the discharge uh, of the liquid which flows in that pipe section then we have to may, uh, uh, we have to calculate the discharge rate of discharge or rate of flow so that rate of discharge we can calculate by using this instrument that is nothing but the venturi meter so let us go about the definition of the venturi meter it is an instrument used to measure the rate of discharge in a pipeline and is often fixed permanently at different sections of the pipeline to know the discharge there so from this definition what we can say that it is an instrument used to measure the rate of discharge in a pipeline that means if we want to calculate the discharge from a pipeline we can use this instrument uh, and it is often fixed permanently at different sections of the pipeline to know the discharge there that means we can we if we want to calculate the discharge of a pipe at different sections we have to place this venturi meter at those sections that means if we want to calculate at three sections we have to keep the three venturi meters at three sections to know the discharge from the every section so that is the definition of the venturi meter and let's go the brief description of this venturi meter so there are different types of venturi meters will be there so the types of venturi meters are types of venturi meters first one is horizontal venturi meter and second one is vertical venturi meter and third one is inclined venturi meter we will see one by one in the later classes so what is the difference between these uh, three venturi meters and is there any difference to calculate the rate of discharge by using these venturi meters let us uh, see the how the uh, how the venturi meters look like and what are the different parts of the venturi meter
so the venturometer looks like this i am taking two sections so this is the section 11 one, one, and this is the section 22 so the these are the three parts this is the first part and this is the second part and this is the third part so what are the names of these three parts means the first part is called as convergent cone first part convergent cone so i am taking the this section so in order to calculate the rate of discharge we have to keep a manometer in order to calculate the pressure head so for this section to this section we can keep a manometer in order to measure the pressure head so this is the liquid present in the pipe so the first part is called as the convergent cone so the pressure at convergent cone is p1 and the area at of the convergent cone is a1 and the velocity at the convergent cone is p1 i am taking and at the same way the velocity at the second section is v2 area at the second section is a2 and the pressure at the second section is p2 so this is the entry so this is the pipe actually this is the pipe uh, before the here and after this uh, venturi meter pipe will be continued so in the pipeline we have to cut at a section and we have to keep this venturi meter in between the pipe in order to calculate the discharge so in that venturi meter the first part which is connected to the starting of the pipe is called as the convergent cone so we have to know about some important points of this convergent cone so the convergent cone which uh, the starting point of the convergent cone is connected to the pipe that means this part so here the part here is connected to the die of the pipe actually so here the area of the convergent cone is actual area of the pipe only but gradually when passing through the convergent cone the area goes on decreases and it pa it comes to the second part that is the throat section so that means whenever the area is goes on decreasing the velocity goes on increasing whenever the velocity is increasing pressure goes on decreasing that means throughout the convergent cone so whenever the fluid transferring from the convergent cone to the next part the pressure goes on decreasing and then uh, velocity goes on increasing that means the pressure energy which we which we presented the convergent cone is gradually changing to the kinetic energy so let us write the, these points about the convergent cone the die of converging cone at inlet is equal to die of pipe and second point is in convergent cone the pressure energy changed to kinetic energy And third one is the length of the convergent cone should be equal to 2 to 3 times the dia at the inlet. That means here we can calculate the dia D1. So the up to here that means before the second, second section what will be the length of the convergent cone will be there. That length should be equal to 2 to 3 times the dia at the inlet. That means if we assume that the dia at the inlet is D1 then the length of the convergent cone should be equal to 2 to 3 dia that means 2d or 3d so third point is the length of convergent cone is 2 to 3 times dia at inlet next we can see about the second part that is the throat so the part here what will be there it is called as the throat so the part here is called as convergent cone or entry point so now we will see about the throat so what is throat actually 
throat is nothing but the continuation part of the convergent cone so whenever the uh, well, uh, area goes on decreasing it becomes a small area so that part we can call it as the throat part and we have to know about the some points about the throat so what is me what are those point means from the convergent cone velocity goes on increasing and pressure goes on decreasing so at the throat what me uh, what happens to the pressure completely decreases so that means low pressure present at the throat point and the high velocity present at the throat point this is the point number one and due to this low pressure there is a chance uh, to develop uh, to um, provide uh, there means there is a chance to obtain a vacuum pressure also so that the, so that what we have to so uh, what we have to do we have to see that the the pressure does not fall below the atmospheric pressure if at that happens it goes into the vacuum pressure negative pressure will be happen so we have to see that the pressure which is present at the throat section it should not below the uh, atmospheric pressure and second one is uh, in order to avoid the cavitation at the throat point we have to keep the dia of the throat as one third to one one of a half of the dia at the entry that means the dia present here the throat dia present here it should be equal to the uh, the entry dia what will be there here d, d will be there so in that day so d by 3 or d by 2 we have to keep the throat of the dia let us write about the points about the throat so first the pressure decreases at throat and velocity increases and second point is to prevent separation we have to keep dia of throat as one third to half of dia at entry let us see the third portion the third portion is nothing but this is the third portion this is we can call it as the divergent cone Here are some points of the divergent cone the divergent cone uh, we, uh, we already see that the pressure at the divergent cone uh, is p2 and uh, area is a, a2 and velocity is v2 so the dia which is present at the throat uh, is gradually goes on increasing in order to create a third section that is the divergent cone so if the venturi meter keeps like this of at the divergent cone it goes like this that means the dia goes on increasing and at last uh, the dia should be equal to the pipe dia so this part is called as the divergent cone so first point is dia at throat is equal to Dia uh, at throat is increased, is increased to dia of pipe. This is point number one. And next point, sir, the pressure recovery takes place at this cone. The pressure recovery means we see whenever the uh, fluid at the convergent cone, the pressure goes on decreasing and comes to the throat portion so after when the fluid passing from the throat portion to the divergent cone the pressure recovery takes place that means pressure goes on increasing and velocity goes on decreasing so reverse will be happen whatever happened at the convergent cone and throat the reverse will be takes place at the throat and divergent cone so pressure energy increases and the velocity decreases and third portion is so kinetic energy at the throat is gradually converted to pressure energy so in the uh, previous uh, at convergent cone i say that the uh, pressure energy which is present at the convergent cone is direct uh, converted to gradually converted to 
kinetic energy at the throat. So from throat to divergent cone, so the kinetic energy which is present at the throat is converted to the again pressure energy. Kinetic energy at the throat is converted to pressure energy. At exit. Exit means divergent cone. And another point is due to the sudden change in the pressure, there may be a separation takes place. Boundary layer separation may be takes place. That means the fluid may not touch to the um, um, wall, boundary wall. So there may be boundary wall separation takes place. Due to that losses will be happen. So in order to prevent the losses due to boundary layer separation, we have to minimize the and to minimize the frictional losses, the convert divergent cone which will be there, it is made longer than the convergent cone. So to prevent losses due to boundary layer separation. The divergent cone is made longer than convergent cone. And the length of the divergent cone is 2 to 3 times longer than convergent cone. Length of divergent cone is 2 to 3 times longer than convergent cone. And next point is uh, in order to minimize the frictional losses, we have to keep the uh, divergence angle also. The optimum angle of the divergence for uh, smooth pipes, it will be 6 degrees and for rough pipes, 7 degrees to minimize losses the divergency the optimum angle for divergency for smooth cylindrical pipe pipe C's 6 degrees and rough pipes 7 degrees like this same we we also keep the some angle for the angle of inclination so this inclination will be for the convergent cone also so this angle should be 20 degrees so the slope is nearly 1 by 4 to 1 by 5 for convergent cone these values for convergent cone and 6 degrees and 7 degrees for the divergent cone so these are the this is the description of the venturi meter and the description of the three parts of the venturi meter in later classes we will see the problems on the venturi meter at a different positions